When building a Shopify store, one of the first and more exciting things that you're going to be doing is adding products to your store. We all work very hard at selecting and creating products for our stores, and it's very rewarding to see them live and on your product pages. So in today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at adding products to your Shopify store. And if you don't already have a Shopify account, definitely click on the link in the description for a free Shopify trial. So once you're logged into Shopify, head on over to products on the left hand side. And from there, in the top right hand corner, you'll see an add product button. Go ahead and click on that. And now we can enter all of our product information that will show up on the product page. So things like the title, description, images that you'd like to add, the pricing and so on. So let's go ahead and start entering our information. Now, just as an example, I'm going to use a hammer. So, you know, we can pretend like we own a hardware store and we'd like to sell hammers and different tools. Now, very similar to a Word document, you can do things like, you know, bold the text. You can also make things italic underline and you can also do things like add bulleted lists so once you're happy with the description go ahead and move down to the media section where you can add different images and to add images, go ahead and click on the add file, browse through your folders and grab the image that you'd like to add. And you can definitely add more than one image if you'd like. Once you add several images, you can always make one image the primary image. So go ahead and add your images. And there we have our hammer. So by default, the blue image was set as the primary image, but you can go ahead and change them around if you'd like. So let's say we wanted the yellow hammer to be the main image. We can drag and drop it to the front. So next we head on down to pricing. And here we have the price, but you'll also notice a compare at price. You would use the compare at price field if you wanted to put it on sale. So for example, let's say the hammer is normally $29.99, but it's on sale this week for $24.99. Now, when you view the product page, you'll see that it is on sale. Now, if it's not on sale, you would just remove this here and put the regular price in the price field. Next is cost per item. So this is the cost of the product for you. Customers won't actually be able to see this. This is just more for internal information. So let's say the hammer cost us $9.99. So it's going to go ahead and show your profit margin. So we've got the percentage here as well as the dollar amount. And then next is the charge tax on this product checkbox. Now, in most cases, you will be charging taxes. So you can just go ahead and leave that checked off if you'd like. And then next we move on down to inventory. So you can add a SKU if you have one and a barcode as well. You can also track the quantity or you can uncheck that. So sometimes you don't want to track the quantity because, you know, let's say you're selling a digital product, for example, that product will never really run out, right? Like if you've created a file and you're selling it, that product will always be in stock. But if it's a physical item, like a hammer, we'll go ahead and track the quantity so that when there aren't any left, people won't be able to buy them and it will be marked as out of stock or sold out on the website. You can also check off continue selling when out of stock so right now, if we leave this unchecked, when we're sold out, people will not be able to purchase the product. So let's say we have, you know, 50 hammers in stock. We can go ahead and put that there. Next up is the shipping. We're going to leave that checked off because it is a physical product. Again, if you are selling digital products, go ahead and uncheck that. And then we put the weight. And just like it says here, the weight is used to calculate shipping rates at checkout. So this helps decide how much shipping is to your customer. 
And there are different units of measurement over here. So we've got pounds, ounces, kilograms, and grams. I'm just gonna put 1.5 just as an example. And then we can go ahead and enter the customs information. So we're gonna go ahead and say that it is made in Canada. And if you have one, you can go ahead and enter the HS code here. I'm going to leave it blank for now. And next we have the variance. So a variant is basically a different option when it comes to purchasing your product. So that could be something like sizes or colors. So let's say you're selling a t-shirt and it comes in five different colors. You would check off this box here so that you could enter the different variant information. So in our case, we do have different colors and Shopify does give you a few different examples here. So, you know, sizes, colors, material, style, and title. But you could really enter whatever you wanted in this space. You can go ahead and enter them and just separate them by using a comma. And you can also add multiple variants to the same product. So again, using a t-shirt as an example, let's say you've got five different colors, but you also offer it in different sizes. So you've got, you know, extra small, small, medium, large, and so on. So let's go ahead and pretend that this hammer comes in a few different sizes. And that way you'll be able to see the different variant combinations. And now you'll see that Shopify has built all of these different variant combinations for you. So the small yellow hammer costs $29.99 and currently there's 50 in stock. You've got the SKU and the barcode as well. So from here, go ahead and enter all of your information for all of the different variants. So I'm going to go ahead and pretend that there's kind of a few of each available here. And we'll even leave a few at zero. You know, let's pretend that the blue medium and blue large are sold out currently. And there's only one left in the red large. And the last thing that we have here in the left-hand column is the search engine listing preview. So when someone Googles, you know, a hammer near you, this may come up and it'll show the beginning of the description along with your title. Now you do have the option to edit this. So you can go ahead and edit this information if you'd like. You can even change the URL that was made using the title that you created. So feel free to update these as you see fit. And just for fun, I'm actually going to put the hammer on sale. So we've done all of the information kind of on the left-hand side of the page. And now we'll go ahead and select the settings on the right-hand side of the page. And that includes the product status. Right now, the product is not live. So even if we save it, it's not actually going to go live. But I'm going to go ahead and click on active. And then that way it will be available to purchase kind of right away. Now, let's say you weren't actually releasing this product today and you wanted to schedule its availability. You could do that by clicking here and then selecting when the product will be available. So under organization, you have product type, vendor, collections, and tags. Now these are optional. You do not have to fill them out, but it definitely helps when sorting through your products and well, organizing them. So you can add the product type. You can also add the vendor. So let's say your store sells different products made by different companies. So, you know, we've got a set of tools that's made by one company, other sets of tools made by other companies. We could put the name of the company here. So let's say this hammer comes from a company called Pro Tools. We could add that there. 
So next up is collections and collections are really great at organizing your products within your website. And it makes it very easy for your shoppers to kind of navigate through the products and find what they need to find. So for example, let's say I wanted to add it to the homepage collection. I could go ahead and select it here. And I could also add more collections by going to the collections in the left-hand navigation. You know, let's say if I wanted to add a tools collection or a hammers collection, I could definitely do that. And at the bottom of the page here is tags and tags are a great way of organizing your products even further. They're also great for pulling related products when viewing a product on your website. So let's say someone is viewing the hammer on your website. Shopify will pull related products depending on how they're tagged and what collections they're in. So let's say you've got a tag called professional. You could then tag other products that are for maybe, you know, professional users or contractors so that when they're shopping, your website will automatically push products with that same tag on it. So, you know, you can kind of assume that if someone's a professional contractor, they'll want to see a certain level of quality in a product. And there are certain tools that, you know, the average user at home may use versus a professional contractor. You could also use a tag like sale for items that are on sale. And then you could create a sale page, for example. So now that we've entered all of the information, let's go ahead and click on save. And then we can preview the product. So to view the product, go ahead and click on the preview link up at the top right hand corner. And here we have our hammer. So as you can see, the hammer is $29.99 and we have the two variants here. The variant combination of blue and large is marked as sold out because we put zero for the inventory. And from here, the user can add it to cart or they can simply buy now. And over on the left-hand side, we've got the gallery where we can zoom in. So again, we've got the yellow hammer as the primary image and then the blue and the red. Now, one thing you'll notice is that when we change the variance, the picture stays the same. So, you know, if I click on the blue hammer, ideally I'd want to see the blue hammer selected on the left-hand side. So let's head on back to the Shopify admin. And if you scroll down to the different options available here, you'll see this little image icon. What we can do is select all of the yellow hammers, for example, click on more actions and hit add images. And then we can select that yellow hammer. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for the blue and the red. Okay, so now if we go ahead and save and then refresh our product page, now when we select the different colors, the image will change. Now another thing you'll notice is that the hammer is not on sale. We originally put that it would be on sale for $24.99. So again, let's head on back to the Shopify admin. And because we added different variants, we have to add the specific pricing for each individual variant. So for example, let's say the small yellow hammer is on sale. We can go ahead and click the edit button and then put it on sale here. So the compare at price is the full price. And then the price would be the sale price. So let's go ahead and refresh again. The small yellow hammer should be on sale. And there you go. It's $24.99 instead of $29.99 and it's got that little sale badge. And there you have it. You've got a product loaded up onto your Shopify store and you're ready to start selling. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe and thank you for watching.